Hello, thank you for joining our webinar on nano spinning and why professional systems are superior for developing perfect nanofibers and particles every time. I'm Jessica Lachey, your moderator for this session. I'm the marketing manager with Nanoscience Instruments. With me today is Dr. Francisco Chaparro, who will be presenting to you momentarily. Francisco is our resident expert on nano spinning technique and has his PhD in material science and engineering focused on biomaterials and electrospinning. Before we get started, I would like to briefly go through our agenda. First, I will walk you through a little bit of the, about the GoToWebinar interface and how we'll be handling questions during the presentation. I will give you a brief overview of Nanoscience Instruments and our product catalog and service offer, offerings, and walk you through our upcoming events before I hand off to Francisco will be presenting the background and benefits of professional nano spinning system, the Fluid Detect, the advantages it offers for a broad number of applications, and how it addresses the common problems faced in scale-up of new product development. We recognize that each webinar interface is slightly different. For the GoTo platform, you can collapse your dialog box with the orange arrow. You are on mute, so if you have to ask any questions at any point during the webinar, you will enter that question in the dialog box that I have indicated. Please do not hesitate to ask any questions during the presentation, but please be aware we'll be handling these questions offline to keep our presentation time to a minimum. You have, we have also included handouts for you to download in the handout drop-down menu. Please download these at your leisure. We are recording this presentation and we will send you the link to the recording so you may watch it again or share it with your colleagues. Nanoscience Instruments sells innovative, sci innovative scientific equipment like the Fluid Tech from Bionesia to help researchers like you solve the world's most complex problems. Our portfolio consists of over 14 analytical and fabrication techniques. Our goals are to help you find the right equipment for your needs, provide support during and after your purchase, perform continuous education on our instrument capabilities as our suppliers roll out new software and hardware upgrades. This is a selection of our product catalog. Today we are featuring our electrospinning and electrospring instrumentation. The Fluid Detect has over 21 upgradable features at any time and is flexible for a number of applications that Francisco will touch on today. We have cultivated our catalog enabled to enable us to provide you with the most cutting edge and comprehensive selection of instrumentation. If you would like to speak to one of our application scientists about any of these products, we are happy to arrange for that. Please contact us at info at nanoscience.com. I would like to take a moment to highlight our sister company, Nanoscience Analytical. We provide con contract analytical services to our clients to provide you support in all stages of your research and quality control processes. Our analytical services division has recently achieved ISO 9001 certification to give assurance to our customers that continuous quality improvement is a top and priority to your data acquisition. I wanted to highlight our process development services we offer through our electrospinning and electrospraying instrumentation. Our team of, with Nanoscience Analytical has the expertise to help you develop your proof of concept with in-house electrospinning expertise. From formulation refinement to process development, our team can provide you with the service to develop your innovation. If you would like to speak to someone in our analytical services division about the services we provide, including characterization methods, please contact us at analytical at nanoscience.com. We have several events coming up in the next few months and through the remainder of the year. I also wanted to highlight some of our on-demand webinars that you may have interest in as well. All of this information can be out on our website, nanoscience.com, on our homepage and news feed. If you have questions about any of these events, please contact us at events at nanoscience.com. And with that, I will now pass this presentation off to Francisco. Francisco? Up to date, the scientific community and industry have been using electrospinning and electrospraying techniques for multiple applications. These include drug delivery, encapsulation, tissue engineering, cosmetics, food packaging, energy storage, among others. In these images, you can see a patch that is used for unidirectional delivery, capsules containing an active pharmaceutical ingredient, electrospun scaffolds to biomimic the native tissue, scaffolds that are also used as a protective layer in tissue engineering applications, and even 3D-like fibers that give morpho morphological microstructure into the main spun fiber. But what exactly is electrospinning and electrospraying? Electrospinning and electrospraying are voltage-driven techniques governed by the electrohydrodynamic phenomena where either fibers or particles are made from a polymer solution. There are two main types of electrospinning for fiber formation, which are shown in these two images. Needle-less base, which operates through an open reservoir, and we also have the needle base, which, as the name implies, the solution flows through a needle. 
In both cases, the polymer solution is exposed to a specific voltage to create an electric field between the solution and the collector. Once the surface tension is overcome by charge accumulation, a solution jet is ejected, and due to bending instabilities and whipping motion, the solvent evaporates and a solid fiber is formed. From a technical view, the needle-less technique will not contain the same concentration over time, especially if low boiling point solvents are used. For example, since we have this open reservoir and then if you're not controlling too well that environment, uh, the solvent is slowly gonna be evaporating and the polymer solution is gonna change. Meanwhile, the needle-based technique uh, will keep the solution properties the same, allowing you to further improve reproducibility between batches. In this webinar, we will be focusing in the needle-based electrospinning and electrospraying techniques. Here we have an illustration on how optimized electrospinning process look like. This is the picture in the left. Due to the applied voltage and charge accumulation, you can see how the solution is ejected from the needle tip. In the lower half portion of this same image, you can see the electrospun fibers, and then this is where the solvent is slowly being removed due to the bending and the whipping motion, which is allowing the, sol the solid fiber to be formed. A few examples of electrospun fibers that can be developed are shown in the middle section. Targeted orientation can be achieved. We can get random or aligned fibers. Also, advanced fiber morphology can, can also be achieved to mimic native tissue. For example, just, you can see how this uh, image in the lower left is kind of like mimic the native um, collagen. And then we also have multi-axial fibers for drug loading and other type of application uh, where you need, where you can use more than one material. Uh, finally, the image in the right shows how a scaffolding material with metamaterial properties looks like. A metamaterial is a material that is not found normally in the na nature. And then as you can see here, this material is opaque when not in contact with the surface, but it becomes translucent as it touches the notebook. Uh, we, all right, when the solution viscosity is low, instead of fibers, we can obtain particles. The concept is the same as before, but it, it is called electrospraying. This technique is used to create particles in the micro and nanoscale. With a lower viscosity, low end entanglement will happen during sample processing, meaning that you're gonna be creating particles instead of fibers. The process is seen is in this left image. If you look really carefully into the blue arrow, you will be able to see that electrospraying in action. It's really hard to see it, but um, this is how the electrospraying uh, process is happening. Um, we also have a few examples in this slide uh, of electrospraying particles. By using different polymer and solvent combinations, along with sample processing parameters, you can get different morphology features from well-rounded particles to rough ones to collapsed shapes and even particles that can be sprayed simultaneously uh, through the elect electrospraying technique. But now, why are researchers and industries using the electrospinning and electrospraying technique? Both techniques can process fibers or particles at room temperature, which makes them suitable for the use of thermal sensitive components. Another advantage is that fiber and particle diameter can be tailored to application needs. Typical control values range from 20 nanometers to 10 micrometers or even more if you do the proper uh, solution optimization. With both techniques, we can also encapsulate any material, including active pharmaceutical ingredients. We can then protect them from harsh environment. For example, if you put that material in the in vivo environment, they're gonna be protected. Electrospun fibers provide a high surface to ratio, which is key for filtration process and energy storage application. These electrospun fibers uh, that are shown in, the, in this slide can mimic the extracellular matrix shown. The electrospun fibers on the lower, uh, in the lower end of this slide can resemble the scaffolded fiber of a decellularized blood vessel. So they really well resemble each other. Another advantage of the electrospinning and electrospraying technique is the wide variety of materials that can be used and processed. Typical materials include Natural polymers like cellulose and gelatin, synthetic polymers like polycaprolactone. We can even use ceramics, metals, and different additives according to the application needs. As you know, solvents have different boiling points. This is a really key aspect of both techniques. The table, this table in this slide shows the typical solvents that are used for both techniques, their boiling point and dielectric constant. 
By properly selecting the solvent, fiber and particle size can be controlled based on how fast that solvent evaporates during the processing. And also a final key advantage of both techniques that I'd like to mention is the ability to do sample development at either ambient conditions or through the use of an inert gas. And this is mainly focused for like um, applications like energy storage or, or when any oxygen sensible material needs to be processed. All right, so um, home build units are typically used for electro spinning and electro spraying, and they are used all around the world, including universities and even startup companies. Uh, sometimes this is concerning as it brings some safety concern, like exposure to high voltage. You could be using organic solvents that can be flammable, toxic, and even cause health issues if proper ventilation is not involved. If they are used in a university, this could bring liability concerns due to exposing the students and any researchers to all these non-safety aspects. This image in the, in the left side is a typical home-built unit. The end user is actually not operating inside a fume hood which will expose the user to organic solvents. Individual components means that you need to operate them separately, increasing your chances to get exposed to all these non-safety hazards. Uh, one thing to highlight is that since the unit is in an open place, the humidity condition is not being tightly controlled. As you might know, relative humidity is a crucial aspect of electrospinning as it directly affects how the solvent evaporates during sample development. Therefore, you will be worrying. Uh, uh, therefore, you will be worrying about like controlling relative humidity during the electro spinning or electro spraying process. The short answer is yes. A lot of published articles in the area of electro spinning and electro spraying do not mention the environmental conditions, sadly, where the samples were created. Um, it is generally mentioned that they were made at room conditions, but what exactly are room conditions? So, if you look into these images, uh, you can see how the relative humidity around uh, United States is changing over a month. If we focus on Maine and South Texas, for example, you can see the large difference in humidity. Not only this will be affecting the way a sample development is processed, but reproducibility will also be an issue. Elevation is also another important aspect to take into consideration for electro spinning and electro spraying, as the boiling point of the solvent is affected by atmospheric pressure. This, will make, this means that it will make the sample different from one location to another. Um, and then again, relative humidity, location, atmospheric pressure, among other parameters are important when batch-to-batch -batch consistency and reproducibility are desired. This is one of the main reasons why professional-grade electrospinning systems are a must these days. What nanoscience instrument, along with Bionisha, offer? We offer professional electrospinning and electrospraying grade system that are able to control every processing parameter during sample development. Whether you need a professional equipment for basic research or advanced applications, we have the right solution for your needs. To introduce you to our spinning machines that can be used for multiple applications, we have four different units that are made by Bionisha. Us, again, now a science instrument, we are the exclusive distributor in the United States. The first one, we have the LE10 all the way in the left, which is a benchtop unit mainly used for basic research and proof of concept. Then we have the LE50, which is another benchtop unit for more advanced research due to its capacity to be implemented with more advanced accessories like environmental condition or controlling temperature and relative humidity during sample processing. We also have the LE100, which is a larger unit able to give unique features for advanced research and development. And then finally, we have the LE500, which is aimed for pilot scale and pre-industrial production. All units allow the tight control of fiber dimensions and stability of fiber and particle production over time. All of these units are also scalable. A solution recipe can be easily transferred between units without worrying of obtaining different results. Our unit parameters are controlled from a touchscreen panel. Uh, this is the one that I'm highlighting here in this image. This will prevent the user to be in contact with the main components of the machine during sample development. For example, here we see a closer image of a tab that controls temperature, relative humidity, and airflow inside the chamber. Just give me one second, everyone. All right, so we can control temperature, relative humidity, and also airflow. So here you see the SP, so set point, and then we also have the PV, present value, so that's the present value inside the chamber during process development. We can also control high voltage, flow rate, 
We can control the displacement of the needle tip or the emitter, depending how you like to call it. You can also call it nozzle. Uh, we can control the RPMs of a rotating drum or other type of rotating collector. And then we can also have a heating a syringe instead of like you need to heat the solution up to a specific temperature. So we have quite a few uh, different options that we can control everything from this touchscreen panel. Another feature that I like to mention is that all units operate outside of the fume hood, thanks to the ventilation system that is implemented in all of the units. This allows the solvent to be properly removed from the chamber during the spinning or spraying process. The chamber is also made of stainless steel, aluminum, and glass frames and enclosure. Virtually any solvent can be used. If a specific solvent that is not compatible with this material is needed for your application needs, we can actually engineer your unit uh, to make sure that everything is really compatible. All units has, have also a safety shot of bottom in case that the whole process needs to be completely stopped at any time. And then these units are also password protected and they can compliance uh, with the UO uh, certification. The Fluid Natec technology operates through needle-based electrospinning and electrospraying, as I mentioned before. Depending on the Fluid Natec unit of interest, we can operate from one emitter to five to 10 and even all the way to 112 simultaneous emitter. So you can do either electrospraying or electrospinning processes uh, with all the way up to 112 emitters simultaneously. So this will allow you to increase the throughput by implementing what we call the multi-emitter spinning heads. Not only we can do single phase or only using one material at the same time, we can also operate in coaxial mode. The image in the left is showing how we do sample processing with 40 emitters in our LE100 unit. By doing so, we will increase the throughput and reduce the spinning or spraying time. The images in the right show some of the multi emitters available with the Fluinatec. First one we have some second. First one, we have the multi-emitter that uses five needle tips, and this is actually in single phase, meaning that you will be able to operate only one solution. But then we also have the capability of adding this multi-emitter to process two solutions at the same time. And then we also have the multi-emitter that can go all the way to 112 emitters. This is also in single phase, but then we can go and operate through a coaxial um, arrangement. We can even use a solvent gas jacket, meaning that we can add a, a solvent surrounding the needle tip, and then this is to improve electrospinning process and even avoid clogging from happening. So if that interests you, uh, it's interesting for your application needs, we can also work around that. A beautiful advantage of the Fluinatec is that for the LE50 and up, we could implement the units with two independent high voltage as uh, one of the question was. This means that two different solutions can be processed simultaneously, each with its own voltage. So as I mentioned before, you can be processing two different materials at the same time, either particles or fibers, either two different types of particles, two different pipes, uh, a particle and even cells because the electrospinning and electrospraying process use slightly amounts of current so the cells can actually survive that process. So this is really, really nice. The sketch in the middle is showing how we're processing uh, fibers and particles at the same time, and everything is being collected in a rotating drum. Another advantage of the Fluinatec technology, especially for scaling up fiber or particle production, is that we can operate in a semi-continuous fashion. We also offer roll-to-roll -roll capabilities, and by combining this with the multi-emitter, we can increase throughput production. For example, depending on the flow rate that you will need, you could operate the instrument for several days. We also offer an advanced recipe option where different parameters can be controlled by, try, by time and through multiple steps. So I would like to highlight in this image, you can see here the two reservoirs for two different solutions because this multi-emitter spinning head is actually operating in coaxial mode, which is really interesting because you can see the these vessels are really large, so you can actually have up to two liters on each. So with the roll-to-roll, -roll, with the amount of solution that you have and using the multi-emitter spinning head, not only you're increasing the throughput, you're reducing the time, and then you can operate for hours and hours, even days, depending on the flow rate. So these are really, really advanced features that we offer in the Fluinatec. Um, another thing is that in order to avoid non-reliable results, controlling temperature, and relative humidity are crucial. 
But why this is important? As I mentioned before, temperature and relative humidity have a strong influence on how the solvent evaporates during the electrospinning or electrospraying process. As mentioned before, these two parameters are strongly influenced according to the location and the season of the year. If your building facilities are not too well controlled, you can easily see dry conditions during winter, high humidity after it has rained, or even fluctuations during a single day. Due to this, batch-to-batch -batch reproducibility results may not be achieved. By controlling temperature and relative humidity, you will not only get reproducible results all year long. If GMP certification is needed, this is a crucial part to get certified and by obtaining reproducibility because you want to commercialize that product. So these two images are showing how the electrospinning looks like when tightly controlling the environmental conditions using our Fluinatec technology. When not controlled, you can have fast solvent evaporation, making the polymer to be partially solidified at the emitter and secondary jetting happening simultaneously. That's, that is the, obviously the image in the left. But then when all parameters are well controlled and optimized, you get the beautiful electrospinning process shown on the right image, causing reproducible and consistent sample production over time. What does Nanoscience Instrument, along with Bionisha and the Fluid Natec offer? We offer you over five years of climate control expertise. We tightly control temperature, relative humidity, and airflow with ease. But why also airflow? Solvents that are evaporated during the electrospinning or electrospraying process will accumulate in the chamber if not properly removed. Therefore, in order to have batch-to-batch -batch consistency, airflow must also be controlled. So the first image is showing our LE100 unit with the climate conditioning unit, which we call ECU. Um, all the air is conditioned in the ECU, then it goes directly into the LE100 to maintain desired conditions over time. The image in the right shows our typical range of operation. We can actually operate from 18 degrees Celsius to 45 degrees Celsius and humidity from 10 to 80%. So for example, let's say that you want to operate at 25 degrees Celsius. That means that you will have a relative humidity capable from 30% all the way to 20, 75%. Meanwhile, let's say that you want to operate at really high temperatures in the chamber, like around 45 degrees Celsius. That means that your humidity will be able to operate from 10% to 26%. So depending on your um, environmental condition needs, uh, you can target either temperature or relative humidity. And then that way, every single global parameter will be really well controlled. So when you control those two parameters, temperature, relative humidity, and also removing the solvents from the chamber, you will be able to achieve perfect nanofibers. Achieving consistent fiber production is so important for multiple applications, especially when batch-to-batch -batch reproducibility and similar results throughout the year are needed. These two images are a clear representation of how the microstructure looks like when environmental conditions are tightly controlled during sample production. The left image shows all defects when conditions are not ideal. Just give me one second. So we are seeing fiber bundles. We're seeing fiber-fiber bonding. We're even seeing fiber uh, beating during the process. And if you don't have a really well tight and enclosed area, you're going to see dust forming in the sample. Meanwhile, when all parameters are tightly controlled, the microstructure that you obtain is consistent and reproducible every time. And then as you can see in this right image, fiber diameter is uniform, and even the standard deviation is less than 50 nanometers, which is really, really impressive. So by controlling all global parameters, you will have consistency over and over. And then again, when using the uh, climate control unit, controlling every single global parameter, and after everything is optimized, you're going to have batch-to-batch -batch consistency, and then you can eventually scale up to production if needed. All right, so we know that advanced applications require advanced equipment. That's why we work really close with our customers to customize the Fluid Natec or based on their application needs. Our following slides will show some of the advanced features we have developed over the years, and then we can also implement in any of our units according to your application needs. Anyone with experience in electrospinning knows that sample uniformity and thickness measurement is not easily performed. The typical thickness profile when a needle tip 
in the static um, position is depicted in the first diagram. You have a thicker area in the middle and then less deposition in the sides. So what people usually do is that to avoid all that from happening, they use more than one needle tip at the same time. But the end sample may not be uniform as multiple fluctuations throughout the sample can be seen. That's why you see three bumps in the thickness. Uh, meanwhile, a meter movement can be implemented to get a better thickness profile, uh, and then you can get a more better and homogeneous thickness. So for example, uh, this is really important for filtration applications uh, because you really want a uniform thickness all around the sample to maximize filtration performance. Um, but then if you achieve a really uniform thickness, uh, you then need to make sure that it's really, the thickness is really well all around the whole sample. So what does researchers usually do um, to measure the sample thickness is that they use calipers. This is not reliable as applying too much pressure will give you a false thickness. An alternative is by creating a sample, um, creating a sample uh, using a laser micrometer, but then if you don't obtain the right thickness, what people usually do, they take the same sample, they put it back in the spinning process, measure it again a second time, and then let's say that you get the right thickness, but then you might have the lamination. That's one of the issues. So ideally, we should have a better uh, way to process um, and make sure that we can measure sample thickness. So our solution is real-time sample thickness measurement. We work directly with our customer to engineer this accessory to your application needs. It is always a high precision accuracy package that can measure over 10 millimeters in range. An advantage of our metrology system is that it is a non-contact measurement, allowing the sample to reach a desired thickness without damaging the sample or its desired properties. A feedback loop can also be implemented with the emitter motion to properly reach the thickness, but what does this mean? If your desired thickness is 100 micrometers, our metrology system will constantly measure the sample thickness and will only stop the spinning when the value is achieved. So if you look closely, let me get these. So if you look, ah, wait, sorry. If I add that spotlight, it's gonna stop. But then if you're looking at this uh, image underneath, you can see how the spin in the position is happening. So the emitter is actually moving back and forward. So let's say that you uh, wanna reach the 100 micrometer in the left side of that sample, you reach 100 micrometers. So the emitter is only gonna be focusing in only one area. That way the end product of the sample is gonna be a really well uniform thickness. So we can actually work uh, with you directly and make sure that that can happen. Uh, we also offer a traffic light signal as a feature to know the status of your desired thickness. And again, if you have that 100 micrometer sample thickness uh, goal, the light will be changing from red to yellow and then to green when that number is um, achieved. So this image shows two sensors measuring the thickness at two different locations and how it changes over time. And if needed, we can also put more than two sensors. So these are the two sensors. You can see how it's changing over time, this thickness in both cases. Here is the traffic light, so red, yellow, and green. One of them will be flashing depending on uh, the thickness that is being measured. Uh, this is a significant advanced feature that can be implemented at any time in the Fluid Tech system. And again, we will work really closely with you to target this device to your application needs. If you would like to get additional information, um, feel free to contact us after the webinar and we can provide additional information. Due to the numerous emerging applications in the pharmaceutical area, we also offer what we call the Bio LE100. This unit is made completely in stainless steel, which is easily cleanable. It doesn't have any gaps or crevices, and it even has a cabinet to store materials underneath. This unit has an experimental chamber that can reach ISO 5 conditions, which is the equivalent to the old ISO 100 classification. This means that the environment conditions in the chamber will be clean as it will be removing particles throughout a HEPA filter. While the unit is oriented for pharma, pharmacological applications like drug delivery and creation of regenerative medicine samples, this, uh, this unit will be available for any other, any other application that requires clean, sample development. 
Let's say that you're operating our unit inside a clean room that is under ISO 7 conditions, but you want to do sample development at ISO 5 conditions. So if you open the door of the electro spinning machine, the unit with ISO 5 conditions will be contaminated with ISO 7 environment. So this might not be ideal for your application needs. So our solution, we offer hand ports to avoid cross-contamination in between different environments. This will allow you to maintain climate conditioning inside the chamber and even package or store the sample at ISO 5 conditions. Another aspect that we offer is also a vacuum in place. This is something that a lot of people have been asking us recently. So when you're generating electrospun or scaffold or electrospray particles, there's a chance to have residual solvent. Um, so therefore, uh, if we implement this vacuum uh, inside the chamber, we can actually remove any trace of solvent in that sample, either the fiber or the particle. So this will be benefit as the sample will be free of solvent, you can package it in your packaging material and then still retain the ISO 5 conditions. So this is really, really advanced and mainly used for tissue engineering applications or pharmacological applications, but again, it can be available for, for anyone interested in this. The Fluid Natec technology can be implemented with HEPA filters, and then this is mainly to attain ISO 7 conditions or ISO 5 conditions during sample development, or meaning that the sample development will be more clean and we're gonna have fewer and fewer particles depending on the uh, classification you need. So depending on your needs, if it's either attaining ISO 7 or ISO 5 conditions, uh, we can make this happen. Uh, meanwhile, advanced applications in the pharmaceutical area require a complete sterile condition during sample development. Because of this complete sterile environment requirement, we offer the capability of sterilizing the whole unit and maintain ISO 7 or ISO 5 conditions simultaneously. So this will include sterilizing the water and even the air that is used for sample development. But then again, what does this mean? Uh, typical environmental conditions uses water and room air to obtain your desired temperature and relative humidity. This conditioned air with your set points goes directly through a HEPA filter to remove any microorganism or dust before it enters the chamber of the, or the unit. Meanwhile, by, completing, by complete sterilizing the water lines and even the airflow path, we establish a sterile environment free of possible endotoxins while maintaining ISO 7 or ISO 5 conditions. And then why is this important? When electrospun fibers or electrospray particles are designed for a specific patient, this patient may be allergic to some allergens that could be present during sample development. Thus, sample development for personalized medicine can be implemented with the Fluinatec if we do a total sterilization of the water, the air, and even use proper configurations of HEPA filters. So if you're working with the tissue engineering application or pharmacological area, this may be of interest to you. Another recent advanced feature that we offer with the Fluinatec is the capacity of sample development under inert environment. There are multiple advantages of sample development under uh, an inert conditions. For example, oxygen sensible materials can be processed without any oxidation from happening. Humidity will be completely removed and materials that are sensible to water molecules will be able to be processed using the electrospinning technique or electrospraying technique with our units. So this type of environment is ideal for applications like battery and energy storage where oxygen sensible materials are needed. To maintain inner conditions, we also implement an oxygen sensor inside the chamber because obviously we want to make sure there's no oxygen flowing throughout the, the whole system. The unit also offers a condensing system to remove evaporated solvent from the inert gas. This is really important as we will be able to recycle the inert gas and make these inner conditions are cost effective during sample development. Uh, this slide is about another area that a lot of people are reaching us to help them find a solution. Typical electrospinning setups involve the use of a syringe pump. When scaling up, this is not ideal way to process a sample as the maximum volume is limited. And if the viscosity is low, you can see pulsations because the syringe pumps work through a mechanical operation. 
If you have an emulsion or suspended particles in solution inside a syringe, your electrospinning development will not only be consistent over time as the emulsion can de-emulsify and the particles can precipitate over time. So our solution is that we offer the pressurized vessels that can hold more than three liters of solution. We can have ultrasonic agitation or mechanical mixing for the main solution to keep its integrity. By doing this, we can maintain an emulsion integrity over time, and then also we can maintain particles suspended in solution for better homogeneity if that is a injury application needs. In order to know the actual flow rate of the liquid flowing through the pressurized vessels, we can implement flow sensors that measure the flow rate as low as 0.5 mL an hour and all the way up to 5 liters an hour. So just for clarification, our pressurized vessel, as it means we can use a gas to push that liquid through the lines and then um, just make the electrospinning or electrospray happening. But since we're doing that, we don't know the exact flow rate that is going on depending on the pressure you're using. So we can implement those flow sensors in the line to make sure that we know the flow sensor. If you like any detailed information about any of these capabilities based on your application needs, feel free to contact us after the webinar. Another important aspect uh, about this technology is that it can produce a dry product in a single step, which is really important when using organic solvents because a lot of them can be toxic. For example, hexafluoroisopropanol or chloroform. Um, our units are GMP certifiable and scalable, allowing the technique to be even scaled to a production plan. We can easily increase the number of spinning heads along with the size of the machine, increasing the production rate into the industrial scale. As a matter of fact, Bionisha has the first and only GMP certified plant to produce fibers for pharmaceutical applications and are currently working on development a second GMP plant for particle development. Uh, just an example, with all these three images, we can go from only one emitter to a production plant and even have the finalized product using the Fluinatec technology. Uh, to conclude, I would like to remember everyone our analytical services. We offer process development and optimization for both techniques, electrospaining and electrospraying. We also offer characterization techniques like wettability and contact angle for when the hydrophilicity of your sample is needed. Uh, we can also do microstructure analysis um, through our analytical department using scanning electron microscope. We have uh, the Phenom uh, desktop SEMs in place. Um, if you would like to have even a demo of any of our units, uh, feel free to contact us, and then you can contact us at analytical at nanoscience.com. Before we let you go, I wanted to share our event slide one last time in case you have joined us, anybody that joined us late. We have several events coming in the next few months through the remainder of the year. I wanted to highlight our on-demand webinars that you may have interest in as well. All this information can be found on our website, nanoscience.com, on our homepage and newsfeed. If you have any questions about these events, please contact us at events at nanoscience.com. Thank you for attending our webinar. If you have any questions for general information on pricing information, please email us at info at nanoscience.com. We can also be reached at 480-758-5400. And please follow us on any of our social media channels where you can get the most up-to-date information on our upcoming webinars and events. Thank you so much.